Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, we will be getting started in just about three minutes. If you have any questions or things you know you would like me to cover today around strengths or working from home, please feel free to type it in the chat box. Oops. Started. So I think that's here we go. All right. So today we're going to talk about rocking your strengths from working from home. So one of the things I like to start with everybody talking about is instead of asking folks what do they do, I love to hear what do you love to do. So throw in the chat there a welcome to everyone and tell us what do you love to do. Right. And so for some people that might be something they do for work and for other people that might be something they do for fun. But it's great if you can type in some of the stuff you love to do to introduce yourselves to each other. Excellent. I love seeing people type in there. Fabulous. So as you're typing in, I also want you to look and see down in the chat, there's um, a way that you can also in that area, do a thumbs up or a thumbs down on things. So um, it appears that not everybody will always have that depending on if you're doing this on your phone or your laptop. But if you have that, check it out because we will be doing some thumbs up and thumbs down while we are um, kind of going through the presentation today. Okay, so I love seeing what everyone's in here, right? So people are saying they are, they love coaching and developing leaders. They love to travel. They love engaging with new people, encouraging people, identifying talent. I see there's a whole bunch of folks from Ulta Beauty in here today, which is really fun. Um, you know, some folks said they love connecting the dots. So we all love so many different things. And I love when people at cocktail parties, instead of asking people what they do, asking them what they love to do, right? You get much more interesting conversations. So let's jump in. If you haven't been exposed to Clifton Strengths before, and this is your first kind of jump into this, you know, the whole idea of Clifton Strengths is helping you figure out why do you make certain choices? Right. Why do you do what you do? Why you like certain things and why you're better at other some things than others. Right. So as we are talking today, we're going to do a really quick primer on strengths finder and then we will jump into how do you use your strengths while working from home. So one of the main premises of Clifton strengths is the idea of positive psychology which also brings up the point of you can't be who you are not, but you can be a whole lot of who you already are. Right? Everybody brings very different strengths to the table. And quite often we've set up a scenario where we are all expected to do things the exact same way. So instead of you know, deciding you want to be something you aren't, think more of what you already are and put some more effort in that. 
The second big premise of Clifton, of being kind of a strengths-based group, is this idea that the best in a role deliver the same outcomes using different behaviors. Right, so the best in a role deliver the same outcomes using different behaviors. To me, the easiest way to explain how to do this is this idea of if I asked all of you to go get me a glass of water right now, you all could go and get me a glass of water in different ways, but in the end, you all will have ended up bringing me my glass of water. I'll be able to drink my water, but you may have done it using very different behaviors and still coming up with the same outcome. So thinking about that, this is the idea that you can give folks the high level goal or the smaller goal that they need to achieve and they may come at it from different ways because somebody might come at it from a more creative way, someone might come at it from a really structured way, someone a more analytical way, someone more about building relationships. But in the end, they're all going to have the same outcome. So, and the last one, which I will say, this is the premise that really sold me on StrengthsFinder and made me even more excited to use it as a tool, is the idea that weakness fixing prevents failure, but strengths building leads to success. This is the notion, right, that if all of you do all of the time is focus on trying to fix your weaknesses, that you can prevent failure, right? So, if you're someone who is not great at consistency, right? You're not really the best at doing the same thing the same time every day. You can really focus on trying to become more consistent and prevent failure for yourself. But in an ideal world, you can look at the strengths that you already have and start to really build success and come to the same conclusion and same ability to get to the thing you were trying to do consistently but from a different angle, right? So when I think of this, I think of something like working out at a gym. Right? I have very low consistency. It is number 33 out of my 34 strengths, right? Not something that is really up there in my strengths. Um, it's really, it's almost as low as it could possibly be, right? So consistency, not really good for me. My whole life I've tried to fix that, right? I've always come up with all these different schemes to try to be more consistent with things. But one of the few things that I found that worked for me was checking the boxes. You know, I have really high achiever, which is one of the strengths that I have. And people who have high achiever, we love to check boxes off. So when my person at the gym gave me a sheet that was 30 boxes and said, I want you to get to the gym 30 times in the next couple of months, then I was able to go in and start checking those boxes. So think of ways that you build upon your strength to kind of help mitigate your weaknesses, but don't really focus on trying to be something that you're not. Why do people like this? Why is it important? Because when you focus on your strengths, you're six times as likely to be engaged in your job. You're three times as likely to report having an excellent quality of life, which is out of work as well, and you're more productive. Right. You do things like treat customers better, look forward to going to work. You achieve more on a daily basis. You tell friends that you work for a great company, right? You have more positive than negative interactions with your coworkers and clients. These are all things right, that people want and that companies want you to have. So when you're working in the strength zone, these are the things that come out of it. Okay, so your strengths are your lens on the world, right? This is how you view the world. So usually at this point, I do an exercise that I make everybody stand up and sit down, right? So I have you stand up when you hear a strength that is something that's more like you and sit down when you don't. So instead, you know, I'm going to have you all do kind of a thumbs up in the chat box, um, or you can do a yes in the chat box or an it's me or something like that, right? If this is kind of sounds like you. So here we go, let's look at some of these strengths, right? So our first one here, you know, give me a thumbs up or a yes if you're the person who always talks to the strangers in elevators. 
right? You talk to the people on elevators and airplanes. You're the person who, right, has high woo, right? Winning others over. You love, I see a lot of me's and yeses, right? A couple of nopes there too, right? So some of us, this is what we do, right? My kids are horrified at how many times I've become, you know, Facebook friends with somebody I sat next to on an airplane. Horrified by this type of fact. So give me a thumbs up or a yes if you love to make to-do lists. You are a to-do list person. And then, <laughs> I got a hell yes on that one. Me too, right? I am a lover of to-do lists. Um, I have a whiteboard that's attached, a big magnet on our refrigerator that, um, inst that we keep kind of the weekly menu on because I love them so much. All right, now give me another heads up if you also love to do your to-do lists on the weekend, right? They're not just for work, they're for life. Oh, I got some no's, but a bunch more yeses, right? Yep, there's a, that's a good mix there, right? <laughs> um, Iris, I feel like you and I are the same. I get a lot of really high up ones, right? All right, give me a thumbs up if you always pick someone to be competitive with right? Do you always want to win the race at work? Do you always want to be the car at the traffic light that pulls out first? Um, and it, it's okay. I see a yes and a frowny face there. Um, you know, it's fine to be competitive. And these are all great strengths. They will bode you well at different points, right? All right. So give me the thumbs up or the yes, right? If you are someone who always likes to take things apart and put them back together the way they should be. <laughs> I think I got more no's on this one than the last few, right? So this is, you know, the strength of restorative. If you love to take things apart and put them back together the way they should be, you like to find that problem with something that you can fix. All right. Give me a thumbs up if you have a color-coded schedule, right? You can totally look at this. So <laughs> I get a lot of really big yeses and just as many, I think, really big no's, right? Um, the arrangers of the world. Who are the folks who like to have things? Oh, I love that Elaine said this is a work in progress. <laughs> I feel your pain there, right? These are the arrangers of the world. We'd like to have things color-coded. I bet lots of you have a color-coded closet at home too, or a seasonally organized closet. Right, give me a thumbs up if you always wanna make sure everybody's included, right? You wanna make sure that everybody always has a chance. Wow, that got a lot of yeses very quickly. How about give me a thumbs up if you have a lot of stuff that you, you really like to dig deep into the data and analyze it, right? You want to focus on it and really kind of look at that data. These are the analytical people, right? <laughs> I got a woohoo there from one person, um, right? Someone says, what I have to, I can, but right, definitely not what they would choose to do. So give me a thumbs up if you're the idea person. You love to brainstorm things, right? Given the chance to sit there and just throw out ideas, would, you know, that's your ideal kind of day. Got some sometimes, some yeses there. All right. Um, Oh, this is my brainstorm picture. I said brainstorm and ideas all at the same time, right? Who's, who are the folks who really like to think about ideas? So the idea within StrengthsFinder is that there are these 34 themes that become your strengths, that can be your strengths. But the chance of you having the same 34 in the same order as somebody else is one in 33 million, right? So People don't act like you. People don't think like you. People are going to see the world differently from you. So when I started thinking about what were some things I could offer the folks that I knew or folks who um, might be struggling in this new realm of us all working from home and doing things differently, I started to think about how working from home looks different for all of us, 
right? Working remotely is really different for the person who has really high woo or relater versus the person who has really high analytical. So hopefully now we're going to look at these, all of these strengths that Clifton talks about, um, that StrengthsFinder talks about, and how you can look at those and find the ones that are going to help, how you can look at them to kind of influence how you're going to work from home. So within the 34 strengths that there are, they are put into these four categories of executing, influencing, relationship building, and strategic thinking. If you've done the assessment, you can get, um, or if you plan to do it, you can get your top five strengths, um, or you can actually get all 34 of them in order and see exactly kind of where all of them land. But for most people, they get their top five. And then their top five are gonna fall sometimes all within one of these areas, or they might be spread out across all four. So for me, my strengths kind of go across all four. So I am an achiever. I have communication, I have maximizer, I have individualization, um, and I have strategic. So I hit all four, but not everybody does. Most people land in probably two, two to three. So folks who have executing strengths, these are people with their dominant strengths that know how to make things happen, right? These are the people who get stuff done in the world, right? These are your doers. People in the yellow, the influencing, are people who know how to take charge, speak up, right? Make sure the team is heard. They know how to influence others to get work done. Um, I was meeting with someone recently and we were talking about their strengths and could they see them going back to their childhood, right? Did they, have they always had these same type of strengths and their strengths for their five were in influencing. And they started laughing and said that even as a child, they used to manage to get their siblings to clean their room for them, that they could influence their siblings to clean their room. And I thought, that's, that is an amazing person who has that strength, right? Then we look at the blue are our relationship building strengths. So these are people who have the real ability to build strong relationships, right? So they might be um, really kind of deep relationships and make a team greater than the sum of its parts. And then that last category, the red one, are our strategic thinking folks, right? These are people who absorb and analyze information to make better decisions, right? They take the information and figure out what it is that needs to go and work from there. So those are the four areas. So if you already know what your strengths are, you can kind of figure out which of those four ones you're most dominant in. If you haven't done StrengthsFinder yet, as we talk through them today, you can kind of look at these and think which might be yours. But either way, we'll throw out lots of ideas on how to work from home and seeing if those will work for you. So we're gonna start with executing strengths, <clears throat> right? These are the people who know how to make things happen. So when we look at the executing strengths, each of the strengths has things that they need in order to um, be successful. So here we go, right? If you're an achiever, you need freedom to work at your own pace, right? The achievers of the world, we're the folks who love those checklists, right? We love to check things off. We love to say that we've accomplished things. We love to kind of have a goal that we're going to reach and be able to say we did. Folks who have a ranger really like a dynamic environment something that they're able to move things around and change them to kind of be in an organized way. People with high belief are really good when they have a cause or a purpose um, behind the, whatever they're doing, right? They want to have a cause or a purpose behind the work that they're doing. People with high consistency love standard operating procedures, right? So if you're somebody who has high consistency and you just went from being able to be in an office every day being able to do what you do in a very consistent way to now working from home where there isn't the same standard operating procedures, right? That new procedures and policies may have to get in place. You may be feeling a little bit out of whack at the moment, right? Things may not be feeling exactly like they did. Um, people with high deliberative really like to take time to listen and think before they have to make a decision, before they're asked to speak. 
right? Folks with really high discipline, like a structured and organized environment. Um, people with focus really work well and they have a goal so they can establish their priorities and focus on them. Um, people with high responsibility like to um, be able to have that freedom to take ownership of something and restorative. Those are the folks who like to take things apart and put them back together the way they should be, right? Those are the folks who love to have problems that need to be solved. So when we think about folks who have high executing strengths, so if all of those things sounded like things that are you, here are some ways that working remotely is going to work better for you. So one is to maintain regular hours, right? People who have executing strengths um, are really good when they have regular times that they're going to work. Now, this doesn't mean that your regular hours need to be eight to four, if that's what your hours were in the office. Um, but figure out what might be the regular hours for you. Obviously, this also needs to be in conjunction with your supervisor. Um, so, right, you can't just make your own hours if that does not work for your supervisor. Um, so, the other thing that works really well for folks with executing strengths, right, these are the people who are good at getting stuff done, um, really to have set up starting and ending routines. So, working from home or working remotely, right, is very different than going to the office. If you go to an office every day, you have a starting and ending routine because your starting and ending routine are usually getting you to the office and getting you home from the office, right? For some people it's, you know, you get to the office, you turn on your computer, you get a cup of coffee, you say hi to people, right? You have these routines and now you kind of don't. So come up with what are some of your starting and ending routines. Um, one person that I'm currently working with said she decided that her starting routine an ending routine for the day was going to be putting on and taking off her shoes, right? So she plans on putting her shoes on when she starts working and takes them off when she ends. So she has that. Uh, if you have executing strengths, there's a good chance because you like to get stuff done that you might be working way longer than you need to be or should be, right? So make sure you schedule yourself some breaks. In an office, you'll naturally have these breaks sometimes because you will have things like walking to meetings, you know, stopping to eat, right? Whatever it is where, or you know, you'll have a meeting and you'll have five minutes before the next one starts. Whereas working from home, you may not have that same. So, you know, there are um, two really kind of neat, simple apps out there. One's called Timeout for Macs and one's Smart Break for Windows that you can have it set up to say, okay, every 45 minutes, something's gonna come up on your screen to tell you to take a break, right? Or whatever it is that works for you, figuring that out, but you really simply schedule some breaks for yourself. Um, right, if you're, exec if you're really high with executing, do what you can and then discuss with your team or your boss or whoever it is when you can't, right? because you're someone who's really good at executing and you are someone who likes to get stuff done, there's a chance that you're gonna keep going even when you may not be able to, right? Even when you may not be able to be successful. So think about what it is you can do and then discuss with others the things that you need someone else to do. Um, think about working when you're most productive if your supervisor will allow this. Right. For some of us, we might have been going to the office from eight to four Monday through Friday because that's what the hours were. But really, truly, our most productive times might be working 12 to eight. Or maybe you might be the opposite. You may have little children at home now, right? Because daycare is closed. And so you're trying to figure out how to work with uh, you know, two toddlers hanging all over you. Well, you know, that's the case. Maybe you're going to be most productive from like five to seven in the morning and then maybe from like one to three if they take a nap and then later in the day. So think about what's going to make sense for you. Uh, you know, keep an ongoing list of what you do and what you accomplish. So other things that you can really bring to the team too with these executive strengths are helping others understand how pieces and resources come together. So 
it may be that you're the one who sets up the Zoom calls and has a 15 minute, let's all connect each day to say, okay, how do all these pieces and resources come together? How do we pull these things together when we're not sitting in the same cubicle or we're not able to yell down the hall to someone or send, you know, kind of have those really quick meetings that we might be used to having? Um, you know, if you're someone who has really strong belief, think about what your purpose is and write it down where you can see it daily, right? Think about putting the mission or the core values of what you're doing right in front of you when you're at home. You know, sometimes when we're in the office, we can feel those, the mission and the core values on a daily basis. But when we're at home, sometimes it's a little harder to see those. Um, you know, decide on what your daily priorities are, focus on those and get those done. And then, you know, if you're someone who has a lot of these executing strengths and is good at kind of making things happen, help your team by figuring out um, where the bottlenecks are happening for your team and share the solutions. So, you know, think about how you can help that out as well. All right, so let's move on to influencing strengths, right? So people who have really good influencing strengths are people who you know, get others to do work, right? They are good about getting the team going. So if you're an activator, you're really good at less discussion, more action, right? People with activator are really good at being, um, you know, I always say like the rah-rah person, right? They are really good with getting people excited to get started. Um, folks who are high activator quite often are the folks who are really good at getting projects started in a house, may not be the world's greatest at finishing them, but they are really good at getting people excited and influencing them to get started. Um, people of high command are really good at taking charge during challenges and conflict. High communication are the folks who are really good um, for a sounding board, right, that they need an audience to be able to be able to talk things through. Um, folks with high competition, they actually need somebody to be competitive with, right? You need somebody to be able to compare yourself to. Uh, folks who have high maximizer, right? This is the maximizers of the world are the folks who like to look at things that are good and figure out how to make them great. So they want quality to be valued over quantity quantity, right? So they want good to be valued over the amount of stuff done. Um, people with high self-assurance need the freedom to act independently. Um, people with high significance really are work best when they have an appreciative audience. And people who have WOO, so WOO stands for winning others over, right? They like social variability. So when I think of these folks and thinking about working remotely, if influencing are your top strengths, right? You need to actually be able to influence others, right? Your job and your strengths lie in the world of you being really good at getting other people to do things and motivating a team and getting them to come together. So knowing that, make sure you schedule regular video and phone meetings, right? Maybe these are quick. Maybe these are 15 minutes every day at noon, everybody jumps on, right? To make sure you're connecting. Or maybe it's once a week, you have a half hour with everybody and then an hour with the whole group. Start thinking about over communicating and writing over the phone, via video, um, collaboration platforms, things like Red Booth or Slack, things like that. Uh, when folks are in different places, it really helps to over communicate. So don't assume that people know what you think they want them to be doing. You know, it's okay to over communicate and to state that as you're starting it. So as you're starting to over communicate to even purposely make the connection and say to folks, hey, you know what? It may seem that I'm micromanaging. That's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is give all the information that I need to. Um, the other thing, right, if so, if you have high influencing strengths, a lot of people who have that are tend to be on social media a lot and working from home, it can be hard to kind of balance the personal and the professional. So one suggestion is to actually log out of your social media 
during the times that you're working and then log back in during your breaks. Uh, look at using some project management or collaboration software. Uh, so, you know, anything from Slack or Redbooth or uh, any of those types of project management, even if you just use something simple like a Google Docs um, spreadsheet. You know, be the person who comes up with solutions to make things better for everyone. Um, you know, ask regularly if anyone needs help moving a project forward. Folks with high influencing strengths have that ability to move things forward and keep things going. So to do a shout out to your team and say, okay, is anyone getting stuck moving this forward? They're also really good at, you know, we talked about the folks with high maximizer, the ability to take things good and make them great. So be the person to volunteers to look over work for quality. You know, quite often a lot of folks with high influencing strengths have good editing skills. Um, right, if you have high competition, so set up a virtual competition for folks. Play a game online with your coworkers for a break, right? Just because you're working remotely doesn't mean you can't still have fun with your coworkers. Uh, make sure people are getting everything that they need and clarify what is needed for the team as a whole. Okay, so now I'm going to move over to the relationship building strengths. Right, these are the people who have the ability to build strong relationships that hold a team together. Right, these are the people that get stuff done by building relationships. Now, for folks who really kind of live in the relationship building area, working remotely is hard because a lot of what you need is that interaction and relationship. So if relationship building is the type of, if you looked at these and you thought, this is me, then really make sure you are taking the time to think about how do you kind of build these strengths, right? So if you have high adaptability, you need um, kind of the idea that there are immediate responses needed because you're good at adapting quickly. If you have connectedness, you really need to be a part of something bigger. Developers really need someone to invest in. Um, developers are really good at helping people see the small amounts of progress people make. Um, empathy, right? They need that freedom to laugh, cry, and vent. You know, people who have harmony, they love to find common ground. Uh, people with includer want to be able to bring everyone in. So they really want to have a high level of acceptance of diversity. Folks with individualization really want to see individual expectations, right? They want to see how people get treated differently. Positivity, they like to experience the joy and the drama of life. And folks with high relator really need to have some time for one-on-one -on -one interaction. So like I said, the folks who have these high relationship building strengths quite often struggle with working remotely. So let's talk about ways that you can kind of work on that and have that work better for you. So one is using video meetings to check in, right? Today, there's just too many of you on this call for us to all have our faces up, but to actually have your faces up and to have this be regular video meetings makes people feel a lot more connected. Um, you know, this is important for all of us during this time of kind of the social isolation piece or social distancing, that you wanna make sure that you're continuing to build those relationships with each other and doing it via video versus phone makes a big difference. Um, today we're using Zoom. There's you know, a million things out there that you can use. I find Zoom to be really easy, but I mean, you can use FaceTime, you can use Google Hangouts, you can use GoToMeeting, right? There's lots of stuff out there and many are offering some really good free um, plans right now. So be the person who keeps track of all your team's big and small accomplishments and share them, right? Be the person who once a week sends a note to everyone and says, hey guys, look, this is what we did this week. Here are the things that we accomplished. Because sometimes being out and not together makes you miss what you're actually accomplishing. Um, you know, don't expect too much from yourself or others. This is stressful for folks who've had to work remotely for the first time. 
Um, if you've been doing this your whole life, you're like, oh, no big deal, right? This is what I've always done. This is what I, how I always do things. But right now, give yourself kind of the grace and the time to get used to this. Um, you know, be the person who organizes an icebreaker to start all video calls. So it doesn't have to be something big, right? You're not going to do a human knot or as an icebreaker when you're all in different places. But even just simple questions every day, right? What did people eat for breakfast? Or what did everyone watch on Netflix last night? Or, you know, where does everyone want to go on vacation in six months from now? Um, and make sure you communicate expectations of the people who are going to be in the house with you, right? Because this can be really hard. Um, it can be really hard. Now, granted, if the people in the house with you are toddlers, expectations probably are going to be a little bit hard. But for the rest of the group, you know, for the other adults, kind of set up, you know, when you're going to be doing things. Like I was going to be doing the video call now, the Zoom uh, webinar. So therefore, right, I had to make the decision in the house to say, please don't interrupt me during this time. Um, share your positivity. People might get really down during this time and working from home. So be the person, if you have these strong relationship building strengths, who reaches out and says like, this is great, look, right? I haven't had to put shoes on in a week. Um, or think about like the positive parts of this. Um, encourage the other people on your team to work how they need to. Uh, make sure you and everyone on your team has a way to feel heard. So some people are not going to like these kind of big group video calls, right? They're not going to do well or they're not going to feel that they can speak up. So if you're starting to notice that, set some of those times one-on-one -on -one to have time with that person. Um, you know, remind yourself and others about the big picture. It goes back to two, right? What's the mission of your company? What are the values of your company? How do you keep those kind of in the forefront during a time like this? Um, Share the links that you see among your work, right? So how do you, do you see kind of that thread that pulls everything together and kind of links things together? And send notes to connect with people, right? This is a great time to write some handwritten notes or send regular emails to folks. Um, handwritten, even better. You know, if you can decide that you're going to send one handwritten note a day during the time that we're working here remotely, it would be wonderful, right? All of those people are going to be happy to get that note in the mail. All right, and now the last group are the folks who have high strategic thinking strengths. Um, and for anyone who recognizes the Blue's Clues Steve character from way long ago, right? There's Steve sitting in his thinking chair. So folks who have high strategic thinking strengths, they need some time to think. Uh, they need some relevant background, right? They want the context. They want to know what happened before so we can make good decisions. Um, some folks are really futuristic. They like to talk about what the future could bring. Uh, folks who have high ideation love to talk about ideas and explore possibilities, right? Throw the wacky things out there. Folks who have high input need some space to store the resources that they have, right? Folks who have high input like to gather information and then give it out to people. Folks with high intellection need some time for reflection. Learners love to be exposed to new information. And folks with high strategic, they want the ability to make a mid-course correction. They want to say, you know what, we've now seen that we're going the wrong path, let's go this way instead. So let's talk about what folks with these strategic thinking strengths, how they do well working remotely. Folks with high strategic do love to learn more things, right? So look and see of some sort of daily or weekly training opportunities for yourself. There are so many free learning opportunities right now, right? Things that didn't exist before or that were pay, now we have the ability to do for free because so many companies have stepped up. Um, if you're not finding them and you're thinking, gosh, what's out there? Even if you just Google homeschool high school for free right now, you will have hundreds of things come up, right? You can tour museums. You can learn a new skill. Um, you can right, figure out how to do SEO at this point, right? So many different things are now free 
that just last week would have cost you a good amount of money. Uh, schedule video brainstorming sessions, you know, and set up a brainstorming Google Doc. You know, get a group of people on your team together and say, okay, let's all meet from 9 to 9.30 today and we're just going to brainstorm ideas for whatever this project is we need to do next. Um, think for yourself, what's the best way for you to voice your opinions and ideas? What are the things that you want to be able to say to the team and how does that happen remotely? So is this that you want to do it via video? Are you going to be sending um, emails? Are you going to be doing this during some sort of um, collaboration platform? And folks with high strategic thinking are really good at making the plans and right, setting the future strategy. So start thinking about what's going to happen next year for you or right in the next quarter or the um, next cycle as we get through this. Look at some time to analyze information before making decisions. You know, don't think just because you're on a video call, you have to instantly make the decision. It's perfectly fine to say, you know what, this is great. I took in all this information. I'll get back to everyone tomorrow at 9 a.m. with my opinion and, you know, what I think we should do on this. Um, you know, take some time to do research on topics you've always wanted to explore. You know, this is where I say, right, this is the time that you may have the ability to go down the rabbit hole on something of great interest to you that you haven't been able to do in the past. Um, you know, or organize your home library, organize your computer files, right? Take those, that ability to strategize and put things together and move it forward now. You know, so some other general tips for working from home, right? Um, I love this idea of matching your music to the task. Right. If you're trying to do things that you have to get started doing or you don't like to do, put on some pumped up music. Uh, if you're used to working in not an office, there's always some background noise happening. And at home, it can be really quiet. Uh, make a schedule for yourself. Like figure out how to actually work a certain number of hours. Um, like I said, for many people, when they do this, they actually work when they work from home they work way more hours than what they would if they went to an office um you know use headphones to listen to music if you need to cancel out the other people um, i love the idea of using laundry as a work timer this is something that's worked really well for me from working from home for years because it's things like i'll put a load of laundry in the wash and then come and do something and i say okay i'll work on that until the washer beeps then move it to the dryer. Okay, I'm gonna work on this until the laundry's done drying, right? And kind of rotating it. Um, get outside, you know, depending on the weather where you are, but at least go outside every day, go for a walk, um, you know, find a place that you're not gonna be around lots of people, right? Don't go to the beaches in Miami, but instead find a place to just go for a walk, even just around your neighborhood. Um, and if you're having a hard time kind of distancing work and life when it's blended together. I love the wear shoes idea, right? Put your shoes on when you're working, take them off when you're not. Um, you know, some people will say that you should get dressed up every day as if you're going to the office. That's, that's just not me. I'm so happy to be able to wear yoga pants every day right now. Um, so think about what makes sense for you. And I love this that one of my friends posted on Facebook today um, that, you know, each day do something good for your home, your body, your mind, your work, for someone else, and for just sheer pleasure. So with that, that is the basics of kind of thinking about how do you work from home depending on the strengths that you have and are successful. At this point, I'd love to open it up to any questions people have and um, see if there's anything else that, any thoughts that you have or anything that you've been struggling with by working from home. So you can put it in the chat or if you wanna raise your hand, um, I'm happy to unmute you if you wanted to verbally ask your question.